Hi everyone, Shane Armin Rowe here, and today we have the Retroflag Pi Station case. A case for your Raspberry Pi shaped like a PlayStation with a beautiful screen attached. Is it worth almost a hundred bucks? Let's find out together. The Pi Station case from Retro Flag is a PlayStation inspired case for your Raspberry Pi 4. As you can see, my box was crushed by Amazon, but the product itself was undamaged. Along with the case, you get an 800 by 480 LCD 4.3 inch screen, and it all comes boxed up in packaging that even looks like a PlayStation box. Upon opening, you'll find out that the internal packaging actually isn't removable, so you slide the contents out instead or shake the box until everything comes out. Inside the box, you get the unit itself, of course. Uh, there's a manual tucked away inside here somewhere, and you get a little baggie with screwdriver and screws so you know that there's some assembly going to be required. The unit itself is completely disassembled and will almost fall apart in your hands as you examine it. The case is really attractive and attention has been paid to port positioning, accessing to the ports and even the undercarriage and the little rubber feet set it apart from the 3D stuff that you'll get on Etsy. On the front we have two USB 2.0 extended ports. On the left side we have a door access to the USB 3.0 and Ethernet port. The back side has a 3.5 inch audio jack, USB-C power in, and full-sized HDMI out, along with two locking screws attaching the screen to the case. The easy access to the SD card on the bottom is a real treat. Opening the screen shows more PlayStation love inside, including a power button, a reset button, and a little button that flips open the top. The screen section has its own controls, and we'll be going over those in more detail later. Since the thing is practically falling apart already, let's separate the sections. The case is sold $60 cheaper without the LCD, and this is what it looks like from the back, which removes the full-sized HDMI port. Now, I haven't seen this screen for sale separately, but here are the interfaces it uses, a micro HDMI and USB-C. It's very well built and attractive. Since the case is fully apart anyway, we can take a peek inside. It is a bit more involved than most 3D printed simple cases. USB 2.0 port extenders and a hat GPIO connector is included. You will also see a place to mount a fan, which by the way is not included, nor are there heat sinks included. So hopefully you have those for your Pi 4 already. Don't forget to remove the SD card before you put the Pi in. Now that we've seen the insides, I think we're ready to put this bad boy together. We have our Raspberry Pi 4 and we're going to use the included screwdriver to put it together. Now, where is that instruction book? Okay, here we go. The booklet is pretty dang sparse, but I think we can get through with this. We'll attach the USB extension cables to the USB 2.0 slots. The hat attachment only really fits on one way, so that's pretty foolproof. Now we gotta figure out how to get this thing to lay down straight with the wire management. Just trying to feel my way around you. It just, I don't know, it just doesn't seem to quite instinctively go down. But eventually, as you can see, we got it down. You just gotta manhandle the cables a little bit. And there we go, everything lines up. Now, let's get these screws out. The black screws are for the pie and the silvers are for the case. One of the case screws doubles as a pie mounting screw as well, which is why there's only three black screws. Wow, this screwdriver really sucks. I must resist the urge to replace it with something better. It doesn't help I have these big monster hands either. Let's put the bottom on now. This screwdriver really blows. Do yourself a favor, use a good one that allows you to put some pressure on while turning it. Now we can replace the SD card. Now, 
And next, we'll put the screen on. Just two plugs and two screws. And let's see how far I can get these big old monster screws in by hand. Ta-da! Here she is in her full glory. If you flip the top open, you have the exhaust for the fan that you have to buy separately and install separately. Now to pop open this side door. This thing is still super loose. We're going to have to tighten that up. Yeah, this is what happens when you don't have any fingernails. Okay, and then you can see in here we've got the USB 3.0 and the Ethernet. But this thing is still really loose. It's kind of coming apart. We do have a DC in and, of course, our full-size HDMI port on the back. Um, but this is it. I mean, it, it, it's all put together here. I mean, we can take a look at it. We probably need to secure those. Oh, I missed a screw. <laughs> yeah, well, this is what happens when uh, you're shooting a video. Which one did I miss? Uh, that's the guy right there. And if I had been smart, I would have gotten another screwdriver. But as you can see in the video, I chose to stick with that little nasty one that came packed with it. Okay, at least the bottom's on straight and tight, even though the screen itself maybe is not. All right, well, let's see if we can get some power. I happen to have some power tucked in behind my camera there to power my road, which is on battery right now. Let's see how this guy looks. We push the power button. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe, uh, maybe I had it powered off. Maybe it powers on automatically when you put the power in. Nope. Wait, well, the screen's on. And I don't see a red light on, so I'm guessing we're going to have to hit that power button one more time. Yeah, hit the power button. Dude, power button. All right, and there we go. Uh, we are booting. All right, and you can see the screen actually looks pretty good, but we're gonna get, uh, we're gonna get a lot better view of this screen soon. But I just wanted you to kind of get an idea as to what that looked like booting up. But let's get to this, let's do the screen next and let's really see what this thing looks like up close, tight with proper lighting. Let's go there next. Okay, so it's time to actually look at this screen in much better detail, and we're going to um, go ahead and fire this image up. And uh, everything, is, it fits very nicely. It's very neat and compact. I mean, you can see uh, I've got a Xbox controller plugged in, and I'm just going to kind of get this guy settled. Uh, while this thing is doing its little booting, I'd like to point out the features here on the side. So first off, we have the two speakers which are uh, right now turned down so that I could speak over them. And there is a volume control up and down and brightness up and down, as well as an aspect ratio button, which by the way is absolutely fantastic that we have the ability to be able to change that. Now you can see here, I mean, this is, this is just the intro video to this particular Pi image that I'm using. And uh, what you're seeing, that stuttering and everything is actually part of the video. It has nothing to do with the capabilities or, uh, or usage of the screen. So as you can see, the colors look really good. I don't know how perfect they will come over. I've got a light up here uh, that's, that's lighting up the area around the screen, hopefully, that will keep it from uh, coming in and out. I'm as close up as I think I really want to be. I'll move it up just a little bit, see if I can dial in the um, tracking a little bit, and there we go. So before we actually get started inside of some games, and I'll just flip through here real quick while I'm talking so you can see what this screen looks like. The quality of the screen is very, very good. The colors are very nice. It's very clear. Now, obviously it's super small, so some of these small, the smaller texts you're gonna see down here are gonna be fairly difficult to see, but you can see it's using the whole screen area. It, it's, looking, it's looking really, really good, all things considered. So I'm just going to scroll around here a little bit, let you take a peek. So let's just launch something here. Let's do Donkey Kong 3. And I choose Donkey Kong 3 not because it's just crazy weird game. But you can see that it is, uh, this particular image has uh, bezels on the side. And this is actually in the proper aspect ratio, which is even better. Now the aspect ratio button down here currently shows that we're in 16 by 9. But if for some reason you had a particularly pesky emulator that uh, was f stretching out your screen or whatever, you can change the aspect resolution from 16 by nine to four by three using a hardware button. And this actually looks really, really good. The volume controls here, I'm gonna go ahead and set it for about 50% volume and I'll play a little bit. And let's take a look at the brightness. I'm setting it 50 here. This is probably not a very good screen to look at uh, 
or this image isn't very good to look at for brightness. Uh, you know what, in fact, let's go back. Let me see if I can, um, if I remember this image set up. Okay, so this would probably be better. Let me actually go back even further. If I were to take a look at the brightness and I cranked it all the way up, from 50 to 100, not a, not a, not a ton of difference there. But as we go down from 50, you can see that the differences are dramatic. So for the purposes of this video, since I've already kind of calibrated it for 50, that's where we're gonna stay. Volume control, let's go ahead and take a look here. So obviously we can go all the way down and let's take it all the way to the max. Wow, it's really loud. I mean, you're hearing this over my lapel microphone, but it's also very distorted. So if we go back to about 80-ish, okay. So now it sounds loud, but it's also very, very clear and clean. So I would say 80 is probably about where uh, it tops off at without distorting. These speakers, I know you can't tell through the, um, through the mic, which is too bad because these speakers sound phenomenal. I'm really impressed by the speaker quality. Now they're very tinny, of course. They're, you know, they're, there's no woofers in there. So you're not gonna get a whole lot of bass. But for what we're doing here for video game playing, this is probably gonna be great. And so uh, I can just, I mean, you really don't need to see a game being run, but let's hop into one anyway. Um, and this is a very, this is a simple, very simple game. Let's turn the audio up a little bit here so you can hear. Totally acceptable if you're sitting at a table Except for that volume is going to bother. There we go. Finally, the volume, the on-screen displays hold for a little while. But there you go. I mean, this is this is remarkably decent, and it's in this nice all-in-one little case. All you really need to do is bring a controller with you, right? So you need a controller to plug in of some sort, and you need a power a power source, which is your standard USB-C. And that's it, you're ready to go and play on the go. This could, the power could be done with a battery and you could even probably do some sort of a, a Bluetooth controller so you could avoid the wire. I am very, very impressed by this particular unit. It's a little pricey, but you're, you're paying for this screen and the screen is detachable, right? So you can, um, see if I can get the better, so you can detach the screen and pull it off. And it does have HDMI pass through, sorry, this camera's not behaving. So we do have an HDMI pass-through that will allow you to plug into a bigger screen. Not too bad, not too bad at all. So there you have it. Let's do a quick little wrap up and talk about this thing and give you my final impressions next. So at the beginning of this video, I asked, is this guy worth almost a hundred bucks at $89.99 plus tax delivered prime from Amazon? Maybe. If your use case says, I need a portable Pi with a little screen on it to take on the go, literally you could power this thing with a battery pack, take it to a hotel with you for the kids to play in the car. Yeah, this might actually be worth it. I really enjoyed it. The screen, the uh, speakers, everything on this thing is top quality, top notch. I really enjoy this little guy and I think you will too. As always, thanks so much for watching and take care.